Hey guys, you might remember a couple of weeks ago I said I bought six HP power adapters on eBay and they were all not working for whatever reason. So this is the first of them. I've taken them all out of the box and I've labeled them. So this is ADP05 and I've written on this that it's blown. What I was expecting when I got these was that a lot of them would have issues between here and here because this cable tends to break a lot or people damage the ends. So I decided I would plug them all in. When I plug this one in, uh, it blew up so it actually there was a loud bang so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this out i'm going to take pictures of it and see if we can work out what the problem is working on electronic circuits comes with a risk of serious injury this video is for educational purposes only please do not attempt to work on any electrical circuits unless you have the required training and experience do not attempt repairs yourself thank you and this is my power adapter i had to take it out of the enclosure and scrape off a lot of glue but this is as clean as I can get it. So this is our input section here so this is where our three pin connector comes in from the mains and when I looked at it on the other side I could see that the component that blew up when I plug it in was the fuse. So when the guy plugged it in originally it must have tripped a breaker or something and didn't blow the fuse when he plugged it in however it did certainly blow when I plugged it in over here. Uh, so the fuse is blown and as you can see here there is a piece of track missing here so it seems like that was blown off the board as well well what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna map out where the live wire comes in I'm gonna map out where the neutral wire comes in and see how it makes its path up through the small filtering circuit and onto the bridge rectifier so let's follow the path that our live signal takes so it comes in here first of all and the first path is across to this position. There is a fuse at this position, which I've already said is blown, but I'm gonna mark in the symbol anyway, just so you know the path that it takes. So from there, it's onto a first inductor. And then after that inductor, it follows this path around to here, where there's a second inductor between here and here. And then what's meant to happen is it's meant to follow the path the whole way onto one of the center pins of the bridge rectifier, but there's a piece of track that looks to be burnt off here. I'm going to mark in the pins of the bridge rectifier here anyway because it might be just useful to help you visualize what's going on here. Our neutral wire connects here where I've marked it in with a big N and it follows this path across to a first inductor between here and here. Then it comes around onto what is actually a jumper if you see this on the front side of the board. So we're just going to mark in our jumper and follow the path then to a second inductor which is between here and here. And after that inductor it goes on to the other center pin of the bridge rectifier. Now usually what I would do here is carry out a continuity check between the live pin here and one of the center pins of the bridge rectifier and then the neutral pin and the other pin of the bridge rectifier to make sure that we have continuity. However, I know there's not going to be continuity here because I've blown the fuse by plugging it in and the track here is also another open circuit. So what we're going to do first is try and track down what the cause of the short is. And the first component I need to look at is the bridge rectifier, which is here. Now these are the four pins of our bridge rectifier right here. In normal working conditions, we should be measuring approximately 230 AC across the two inner pins and approximately 300 to 320 volts DC across our outer pins. Now the bridge rectifier is a true hole component, so the actual component itself is on the other side of the board. But if I was to bend the leads of that to show you what it looks like on the other side, it would be something like this. Most of them come in a package like this, sometimes they're for discrete diodes. On this particular adapter this is the one that's in use so as you can see it's got a plus here it's got two AC pins it's got a minus at the end and these come true to this other side where they're soldered onto the board here so what we need to check is to see if there's any issue with this there should be four working diodes in this package and we need to see that they're all fine and that there's none of them shorted next I'm going to superimpose the internal diode configuration of this bridge rectifier onto the board because I think it helps us to more easily understand what's going on when taking these measurements. So as you can see, there are four discrete diodes in this package and we should be able to measure those individually. So let's do that now. Before taking any measurements here, just to note that the adapter is fully plugged out and the main filter capacitor has been discharged so there is no residual voltage on the board. 
Let's measure the internal diodes one by one. Well, the first diode can be measured between this pin and this pin. As you can see, this is our first diode right here. So let's do that. I'll introduce my multimeter in diode mode, and I place my black probe to this pin right here, and my red probe to the minus pin. And when I do that, it measures 0, 0.000. So we're measuring a short across that diode. I measured a second diode and it also came up as being shorted. Diode mode reading of 0, 0.00. The third diode is also measuring 0, 0.00. And the fourth diode of this bridge rectifier package is also measuring 0, 0.000. So it does look like the bridge rectifier has a problem. However, I want to take it off the board and test it out of circuit to be sure that the component itself is damaged. And this is the bridge rectifier out of circuit. So I'm going to check and see is it measuring shorted off the board. So we've got our four pins, so let's start. Any two pins. Okay. And as you can see, this is just one big lump of metal at this stage. Every single pin is shorted. So where do I get a replacement bridge rectifier? Well, amongst the power adapters that I got, this one is actually working, and I think it's the same type. It's very close if it's not the exact same one. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take the bridge rectifier out of this adapter, because I know it's working, and I'm gonna swap that in to my faulty power adapter. I went ahead and replaced the faulty bridge rectifier. So with our known good, bridge rectifier in circuit, I want to check now and make sure that all of the shorts are gone, just in case there's a secondary component that's shorted further down the DC circuit. So let's take the same measurements as we took before. So first we want to measure this diode right here. So I place my red probe to the minus pin and my black probe to this pin right here. And it measures 0 0.544. That's in diode mode. So that's a good measurement. That looks okay. I measured a second diode in that bridge rectifier and that's also coming in at a good measurement at 0 0.542 in diode mode. So the first two diodes are good. The third diode in the bridge rectifier is measuring at 0 0.544 as well, so that's also good. And finally our fourth diode in that bridge rectifier is also measuring 0 0.544 volts, so that's good. So we've now confirmed that all of the short circuits that we were measuring previously are now gone. And the readings that I'm taking from the bridge rectifier in this circuit are correct. But that doesn't necessarily mean that this is the only faulty component. So before replacing the fuse and the broken track and just plugging this back in again, I'm going to do a check around the board to see if there are any other short circuits. Now this check is not going to be exhaustive by any means. I'm going to identify the components that most commonly fail and just see if they're short circuited or not. The first place I want to check for a short is the DC output of my bridge rectifier. So this is the DC output here, this is the DC positive and the DC negative. So I place my red probe to the minus pin and my black probe to the positive pin and we get a reading of 0 0.514. So there's no short on the output of the bridge rectifier. I've located the three pins of the power MOSFET right here. Now these go short quite often on these little power adapters. So before plugging this adapter back into the wall, I want to confirm that this is not shorted. So let's take some measurements from it. The first measurement I took is between these two pins and I measured 0 0.490, so there's no short here. Between the third pin here and the first pin, I'm measuring 0 0.688, so there's no short on those pins either. And checking between the other two pins of this MOSFET, I'm getting an OL reading. Now, this is not checking to see if the MOSFET is working at all. This is literally just checking to make sure it's not shorted. So what I can say at this point is the MOSFET is definitely not shorted. And the last check I want to carry out here is just on the DC output. This is the part that connects to the actual cable. A lot of the time you can find that these are shorted because the wire gets damaged. But I'm taking a measurement across the positive and the negative here and I'm measuring 0 0.230. So that seems okay. We've carried out a cursory check just to see if there were any other shorts across this board and I can't find any. So what I've done here is I've just repaired the broken track, I've just soldered across that for the moment and I've also replaced the fuse with a piece of fuse wire. And we're going to plug this in and see what happens. 
Okay, so this is the moment to shoot. This is our adapter, and this is my setup to measure the output with my little voltmeter. So let's press it on. And as you can see, we have 19.77 volts. So it looks like that was all that was wrong with it, guys. Just a blown bridge rectifier. 